is now. Okay. Could you introduce yourself by name? Yeah. And as an artist and what you do and Okay. In a nutshell, sorry. In a nutshell, my name is Adam Berry. Uh I don't like the word artist. I think it sounds a bit convoluted sometimes. I consider myself as a, an artist and factory worker, or I prefer just the word painter. Doncaster, studio, Churchville, an old art college, fantastic natural light. I exhibit in London when I can, Paris this year, New York next year, uh, Austin, Texas the year after hopefully, uh, around the north of England, sometimes in Cornwall. Uh, I travel a bit, paint a bit. I'm turned on by a landscape and especially I guess what you could term as the complex space of contemporary landscape, you know, and it's different layers. You know, what's within it historically? Legend, you know, I'm interested in smugglers' tales and things like that of the North Yorkshire coast, um, coal mining, industrial landscapes, the female form sometimes, depending on the model being available. Uh, what more can you say? I'm just a travelling painter, I guess, you know. Cool. Any more questions? I think just, just there you mentioned the female topic, maybe that's just enough. Okay, it's well... It's only going to show the p painting, like, five seconds, five, six seconds anyway. Maybe you don't want to go into detail. Maybe... That's... Maybe a bit of a reflection. Totally up to you, mate. She was a fantastic model, you know, and a, and a real joy to work with. A physique you know, for, a, for such a mature lady comes in part from, this is the link to the coal mining landscapes, if you like. She was, um, or is still, uh, riding motocross motorbikes on, on the old spoil heaps around Barnsley and Wakefield. And, uh, you know, it's uh, this fantastic physique and this muscly armed, sort of muscly legged, uh, Brilliant form, just suits so, so her painting, you know, right down to the ground. But when you actually get talking to her during the painting process, you know, and, and you say, just for the sake of conversation, how would you like to pose, you know, Jules, if, if, if it was left up to you, you know, if I didn't request you to pose like that with a cigarette, how would you like to pose? And immediately, she, you know, she's adopted this sort of pose like a... Uh, the, what's the actor's name? You know the. Arnold yeah, that's her. Yeah, you know, with her arms up like this, you know, uh, showing her biceps off, mm. and, and saying, you know, like a strong person, you know, who's raised two kids and, and who's who's been through the, the coal mine strikes and everything like that, you know, and uh, and but it's, it's, it's just like conjures up that stoic figure, you know, that that strength of of that sort of community, you know. I, in a visual way, and then, and then you, you know, but then you catch her later with a cigarette, you know, and she thinks you're not watching, and and she's she's staring off into space, you know, with with her own thoughts, and that's more natural, you know, it's it's not contrived, and, and that was kind of the, the best piece from that that short series of three, you know. Uh, the other one was a bit too demure, it didn't sum her up as a person, you know, it's just that kind of thing, you know, some work, some don't. Spot on. I think that's it. Nothing else you want to add? Say anything else? I'm happy with whatever, because I don't know what you're going to do with it anyway, so if I keep doing it all day, you might cut it out anyway, so let's just leave it uh, with whatever you've got. You I'm can use about it. An hour's worth there. Right. Of dialogue. Just use whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. How can I turn this thing off now? Yeah, you can just. Use it.
Here, you just press the red button at the bottom. This one? No, on the other side. Yeah. I don't want it Whatever to fall. Whatever you say will be recorded in this. I don't want it to fall over. You can put it. You can lay it down if you want. That's better. I'm happy now. No. Okay, so how can I explain the title of the show? Fifty Shades of Grey. It's nothing to do with the film. You love my. Is it gone? Um, yeah, it, it's just that it, it, I want it to be clean as possible. I don't want it to like, get blocked. Um, a little bit further up, maybe. Like, that's maybe about here. Yeah. Give me titty. Do, do a small crease, like a. Smaller crease than what you use. What do you want me to say, John? Uh, well, it's 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 a bit, you know, it's a bit of a struggle. Like Rachel Horn is usually the, the interviewer. Uh, I'll just get some gum before we start. Go for it, mate. Right? One time, well, no, you don't. Cause it affects you. How do you want it? All right, um, for the sake of it being your exhibition, just interview yourself, how you know, and who you are, what you do, where you're from, and start from there. Just for the sake that I, if I need it, it'll, oh, be okay. there, it'll be there. I guess it's kind of difficult to do an audio sat staring at you when we're not in the presence of the artwork. So I'm, I'm trying yeah, yeah, to yeah. visualise yeah. no what, what is there, sort of 50 mile away. Mm. But we'll, uh, we'll have a go. I'm, I thought about it very clearly the, the other day, John, and I made some notes. Uh, so I'm going to refer to those now and again. Sorry. That's why I wanted to do it in a quiet room. It's a shame Jamie's busy, otherwise it would have been perfect in that other room, yeah. Yeah, What's the limitations of this tape thing? Does it roll for an hour or does it roll it, it for... It can go as long as the battery goes. Okay. What I'm thinking is to save your tape space, if we erase what we've just done. Or not done. No, it's okay. It can record how long that was. Then I can nip over and see how long William's going to be talking. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you want to do that. Pidgey fucking Russian, however it is. Then we can. Uh, not in any rush because. We can get a time scale then, can't we? Yeah. I mean, he's being a bit, a bit of a fucking wanker, John.
job to begin. What do you know of words? Sound volume wise. No, what have you did with words? What have you done? Other than I'll put Busby on again. Sometimes I've actually forgot to press record. Okay. Basically, introduce yourself. I'm Adam Berry, I'm an artist from Doncaster. Take it from there. Okay. And then I can ask you some other things, maybe. Yeah, please do ask questions. That'll help me, yeah. you know, to understand what you have to, you know, I can answer any question, there's no secrets, but it, the odd prompt now and again for myself like, would be really helpful, you know, to, to um, sometimes I get a bit carried away with a flow that's n perhaps not relevant, you know, to, to uh, what Ian wants, I mean, this is really, a, Ian's our boss, you know, Ian wants a video doing, uh, it's going to help Karen probably advertise a course in terms of the potential of the new gallery space in Barnsley to uh, be used by other people, you know, to make, make it more aware uh, and to kind of gi give it what it deserves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, it's a great place, Barnsley, and uh, I made it, I made it I've only been there for a short while, but I met a lot of friends there in, 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 in that short space of time. And they've not all been to do it artwork. A lot of people have come from mining industries and, and places like that who've called into the gallery, you know, because of the title of the theme being Fifty Shades of Grey, that I've kind of used as a hook, as an advertising hook, you know, for Ian and for Karen, you know. But it's nothing to do with sex parties or, or tying people up, you know. Uh, with rope and stuff and, and carrying on like in that sense of it. It's more to do with charcoal drawings and graphite drawings and the, 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 the coal mining landscapes. The, the, the basic starting point or the point of departure for, for, for the visual imagery that I've, that I've conjured up is all to do with, you know, so. But I see grey as not a colour. It's, it's using complementary colours against each other and a lot of these greys are purple and blue and in a visual sense uh, that's kind of what turned me on about it apart from the history I mean it, they've asked me to talk about it as a holistic practice where you've got something visual but it's underpinned by theory and primary research on site within landscape so you've, you've heavy engineering disasters of all manner, you know, and horrid accidents, amputations, cage crashes, strikes, things like that, you know, all, all grey periods in our recent history, you know, that, that, are, that are within that landscape, and that's how I try and approach it. It's not just about doing a bit of painting, it's a bit more political, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I'm struggling in a way to, to explain this in, in terms of an audio tape. You know, uh, it would be a lot better if, if this could be tied into a video. So um, maybe that can be done later on and, and kind of edited. Uh, but uh, thanks for the opportunity, but, you know, from John and Rachel and, and Karen and Ian, you know, to be able to show the work and, uh, and to link it to Barnsley College and how, how it might have a life after this, you know, after this exhibition. It might, it might be part of a, another course altogether, you know, in, in, in terms of how to run a gallery, you know, and in a difficult place, in a new space, you know, in, in a town centre location that's maybe not too geared up for this type of contemporary art. So, yeah, how can I condense my practice in, in, into, into three minutes. I guess, um, okay. 
talk about the theme or the title of the show then, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey. So, um, how, how the sketchbooks lead into intermediate work and how the intermediate work leads into final realised pieces. Uh, large scale, empowering it by by the research and by lifting out of that research possible titles that are kind of provocation can be subtle. It, it doesn't have to give a date or a man's name or anything like that. It's about a sense of place. So what makes a landscape a place? How can what what is within it? What what can be lifted from within it onto onto a canvas in a meaningful way? Um, in different layers, like different layers that you use in, in paint, you can have Maybe talk about maybe brought up fox hunting yet? Um, or I don't. I don't think I've done justice to, to current theme. Uh, I, I'm, I'm prepared to talk about my ideas on 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 that series, which does have a crossover. You know, part of that landscape in the Isle of Axel, or the the lowlands, as the, as they call it, uh, the the hunting, the pro hunting lobby. Um, do frequent that area and that has become part of research. Talking about, again, on site, primary research and interviewing both sides and giving both sides a chance to talk about their beliefs or, or their experiences and what they think is good or bad about it. So yeah, uh, but I, I try and make it a non-didactic artwork. It's not for me to tell other people how to live their lives, you know, but without having a starting point like that and without doing the research, you know, the work just for me couldn't exist anymore. You know, I needed a strong point of departure, something exciting, something within landscape. You know, it's not just a visual thing, it's not just about a light effect or a um, a day out, you know, and painting a tree. It, it's, I try and elaborate upon or lift from within other, other aspects, you know, whether it's political, whether you're for or against it. It, 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 it has a life outside of the limitations of painting in that sense. So you have um, maybe. A way, or, or a way in for the viewer in terms of what what are they going to think about after they've left the exhibition, you know, on the train home, or something like that. What are they going to talk about? How they're going to thrash that out with their friends and have a conversation about it. So it's about you know the potentiality of painting at the same time as its limitations. Now, Janet Wolf once mentioned the the. Uh, how sociological art such as that has problems if it's not going to utilise the aesthetic. So at the same time as dealing with horrible subjects like case crashes in a coal mine or hunting animals for sport, you know, uh, and getting dressed up to the nines and everything like that, maybe if you consider it as, in Janet Wolf's terms, the sociological aspect of art ignores the aesthetic or the beauty of a thing at its peril. So to make a thing look nice, even though it's about a horrible subject, it's part of my mm, exploration of the lim limitations of art. Now, I try and tie that into site-specific selected found objects such as gate posts you know found at the edge of the field or, or window frames from an old barn 
things like that. Things that, maybe that's because it's going to save me a few quid on professional type framing, but it gives the work another aspect altogether in terms of what's been termed within, you know, landscape. That's how my work's been branded. So it, it's kind of acts as a portal into another time and place almost. You know, I mean, you look at fox hunting, for me that belongs in the Middle Ages. So, you know, it's no place in 21st century anymore. It's, uh, but it's still there within the landscape and it's still happening, you know, even though it's illegal, you know, and they use trite, or overused and hackneyed arguments that we c our hands were hunting a laid trail but all of a sudden they came across a real fox and we couldn't control them and things like that. It just doesn't wash, but it washes in court because of the the old school tie and, and whatever you want to call it, I uh, allegedly say, you know, so the judge might know the hunters and the hunt saboteurs for me are a different class of people altogether. You know, they're they're they're, they're involved in righteous anger, you know. They only it's a peaceful protest. They only get violent to protect themselves or, or their, their cars or their houses, you know, if they're attacked. You know, otherwise it's just a matter of uh, laying a a scent, a false scent, you know, of, of a powerful aftershave or something like that, 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 that sends the hunts, you know, the hounds off track. You know, different class of people altogether, as far morally and ethically, as far as I'm concerned. And this is what I mean about doing the research and, and not just using secondary research that you found in a library or something like that. So you've actually gone out there, it's about being within landscape, you know short periods of intense field work with with charcoal or graphite, you know, smaller panels. And, and that forms the first stage of the work. After that becomes um, a second stage of intermediate studies, you know, that's pushed a bit further, questioning, as I said about Janet Wolfe, you know, and the, the aesthetic being important to sociological art. So, you know, taking it to another level in terms of method, material, process, form, kind of looking at, you know, um, would someone want this on their wall? I mean, whether they're pro or anti, I mean, another twist, if you like, to that body of work would have been, or is, and, and is go ongoing, uh, kind of, if I can sell a painting for a thousand pounds to a fox hunting lobby, you know, who, who's pro uh, and who practices that, you know, because they think it's going to look good as a vacuous, empty landscape painting in a, in, a, in a bonkers type frame on their wall, in their study. I would gift after gallery commission and everything like that, which is another issue aside, maybe you know, 25% of whatever I get from it to the hunt saboteurs. So, you know, you've got this, this fucked upness of somebody who's practicing this evil actually funding their downfall through providing diesel money to the hunt saboteurs. So, you know, I enjoy that side of the fucked upness, the unseen side of the work to that, to that, to that particular body of work. Now, The, uh, can I go back to the mining landscapes? Because I don't think I did dealt, I don't think I did that justice, you know, because that, that gives another aspect of, of, of what's within. You see, I talked about the three different stages. The, you've got the, the on-site studies, you know, the, the, the intensive field work st stuff, you know, and, and it's affected by the weather. You know, you've got wind and the rain and it's not always sunshine. So, you know, it's, it, that, that's tearing or, or encouraging the support, you know, and the, and the bits of scrap cardboard that are used from the framers to, to sort of be affected by the weather and, be, and again, to become a part of um, what's within that place. You know, uh, to take something away from that. So... Uh, no problem, speak up. Mm. I've just been told I've got to speak up a bit because I'm mumbling. <laughs> so... Uh, I guess again, I've, I've gone back within myself. I'm, I'm transporting myself, like in, in my mind's eye, back 
to these places that I've visited in these times that I've done it, you know, these many thousands of times. So, you know, again, within, within landscape, on site. Um, you know, I was looking in the hedge bottoms as well, you know, for things to use as frames. So anyway, I've lost track of that. Uh, John, John has uh, oh, done me nothing a bit. <laughs> but uh, You're doing so well. I mean, you've, I mean, there's plenty there. Okay. This, the, I'm going to refer to my notes now about sketchbooks because they, those are important. They're, they're old heavyweight accountants, ledgers and tones. And it's just, it's just great that the paper you know, although it's full of acid and I have to treat it with chemicals and things to make it, you know, uh, have some sort of longevity because you've got responsibility. If you want to frame these things up, you know, uh, you don't want to sell something that's going to destroy itself because of a bit of acid inherent to the, the fibres of the paper. Um, how can you sleep at night? So, you know, uh, I use a lot of methods and materials and there's a lot of material experiments that, that, that take place to make sure that that's, that's going to last, that's going to have a life in a frame behind glass. For uh, perusal, but also, you know, the responsibility is down to its economics, basically. You know, it's, it's like selling, selling, otherwise, you know, it's, it's garbage. It's like selling a pair of old underpants. You know, it's, it's, no, it's no good. Um, my tutor used to call me a palimpsest, or, or, a, or seeing a landscape as a document. Uh, a friend of his called it a psychic tarpit. Or, or the, these are the ways that I look at landscape. You know, the layers of time. You've got you've got ancient history. You've got medieval times in, in these coal mines and in these these lowlands. Uh, Literally Roman artifacts that are found, and there's digs happening. Underneath that, you've got Middle Aged tools being found, st Stone Age, bloody Iron Age, everything. Over the top of all this, you've got the coal mine, you know, and it's a landscape that's totally changing. It's, it's the simple truth of landscape. It, it changes every day, especially in a working coal mine environment. So, you know, the bulldozers are there every day and they're, they're trying to make it look pretty when it's not. So they're planting trees, you know, digging it all up, trying to grass it over and make it look like a green hill. You'll notice that some of the titles in the show refer to the green hill all the time. It's not a green hill. You know, it's a green hill where the buses go past and the train goes past, but behind it is where all the accidents were and the amputations. So it's many faceted landscape. It's a fascinating one. And you've also got these things, these physical changes. So, you know, um, hawthorn and, and, and things in winter, you know, I don't, I don't just play around with bright green paints in the summertime. It's about winter and the strong winds and the hawthorn, you know, and the, and the sharp thorns and everything like that, you know, and, and the harshness of the animals who live there. You've got foxes, deers, hunting dogs, everything like that, you know, all living out there in the wild. That's the real landscape that I'm trying to portray and that's to refer back in a way, to the title of the show, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey. So, you know, it's all grey, or grey. It's kind of like grey, brown, grey, blue, grey, green, grey, purple, but muted purple, not a bright, garish one you'll find in a spray can. It's about mixing those colours as greys and finding the truth within your palette, or within, so, somebody called it the last bastion of representation, I think it was Oliver Lange. So, you know, uh, that's the only thing that really defines it as a landscape painting. You know, everything else is scored, scratched, torn by screwdrivers or on-site found materials, you know, lumps of coal. It, uh, some of the titles reference the effects of, you know, the affect and affect of, of nature, you know, and, and, and how it's splashed. You know, when it starts raining really hard and blowing wind in your face, you know, you get lumps of lumps of coal and, and and slag and spoil from the heaps, you know, and and scratches by the hawthorn as you're carrying it on, half wet, you know, all of this effect, and it, it becomes a real a real part of the landscape, scratched into or, or put within these little 
documentations that I take away you know, from landscape to, to, to work on further at larger scale. So the kind of aid, aid memoir, someone else called it, you know, it's like a French thing that just means it helps me remember where I was at that time, you know. Um, I go out in the snow, in the rain, in the, in, the, in the strong winds. So these link back to the idea of the sketchbook as a palimpsest uh, or a landscaper's document. Um, somebody else called it. <coughs> Cheers, William. Somebody else called it uh, the genius loci or um, a location's spirit you know, a spirit of place. So, but the work is, in a sense, what, what I'm looking at and thinking about, not what you actually is just captured on that canvas or that bit of scrap cardboard, you know. Um, they've got a use, but it's just a use value in terms of the first stage. The second stage, as I said, intermediate work. You'd have to see that visually to understand the transition. The final realised stage is kind of 20 times as big, you know, and that's when you go to town on the presentation, the, the professionally cut mount, a nice white frame, you know, something that adds another six inches to it, you know, top, bottom, left and right. So we end up with a massive thing on a wall that, that somehow holistic is under... William! Just give me two minutes, mate, yeah? Thanks. So, yeah, un underpinned by these two elements of, or t types of primary and secondary research, underpinned by a theory from other artists. There's one aspect of the sketchbooks that I think are relevant. If I could just mention those and then wind it up. I mean, the simple truth of how violent a synonym or, or a, a language in a different type of way. The sheets of the, the, the original folio is a double palimpsest as opposed to hyper palimpsest. So you've got you've only got two basic layers. It'd be too much for me to, to ask of me to, to deal with a hyper palimpsest, which is like millions of layers, you know, of the, of the actual truth of the landscape. So I'm just focusing on these points, these two most salient points. So you've got a bit of history in there. You've got a bit of site-specific selected ma material in terms of frame as a portal or, or a little window and, and a personal subjective response of the painter as a window into, in, in, into those side of aspects of landscape. You know, it's not just a visual thing of a light effect on that day, although that is borne in mind. It's kind of on, just on the surface, you know, that kind of stuff. You've, you've uh, sequestration and, and diffusion and layering and constant reworking of the landscape, you know, in an actual tangible, touchable, visual and tactile sense, it's real. You know, it affects the rhythm of the landscape, it changes every day in these sort of industrial landscapes, you know. And you've got blokes limping on, you know, they've had an ac accident, you know, and, and you'll have a drink with later, what happened mate, you know, and all this stuff. Uh, play pool with a guy, you know, a 14 year old for example. Great mate of mine, you know, uh, quite Im an emotional thing, you know, uh, involved in cage crash, 1939. Uh, the only guy to, to actually refuse an amputation, 
you know, but he wasn't old enough, so his parents had to come and sign a thing, and he says, if you want to s chop my legs off, start at my fucking neck, you know, and things like that, really emotional things, and they were underpaid. You talk about the, the culture of the claim today, you know, and, and people inventing accidents, you know, and, and, and having whiplash and all this, it's all bollocks, and, and these guys have had real accidents and they were paid pittances, you know, shillings, you know, for the, because they knew they'd never work again because they've had the fucking legs chopped off. So what, what you, you actually get, you know, with a guy like that is someone who refused amputations and actually went in army later and became a gymnastic champion, you know, and a boxing champion and things like this, you know, and he's still knocking around playing pole and beating people in my age, you know, the younger generation, and we've got a lesson to learn. So, these sort of lessons are, are all in there, you know, it, when, you, when you think of landscape as a document, you know, there's, there's lessons to be learned for, for a younger generation, instead of just carrying on and, and being argumentative, you know, and, and, and bullying your older neighbours and things like that, have a look at what they've actually done. You know, uh, so that relates back to me to me sketch folks, and you know, and, and the idea of the palimpsest and the landscape as a document and everything like that. You know, it's uh, it is a violent synonym. You've got accountants handwritten written entries in rows and columns, making distinctions between office and canteen works. You know, and and, and hospitals. You know, reference to hospitals and how much it cost them. They were more worried about how much it cost them to pay for a fucking ambulance and then what was going to happen to the bloke next year who, who could never work again. And, and how can they... How can, how can, yeah, it's important that the industry survived, but, you know, play fair game, you know. So, so these become crypto-inferior, uh, kind of layering of a sense of not what's changed but what's not changed or why not. You know, and, and that's the same with the fox hunting thing, so there's a lot of crossover. You know, I was, I'm, I'm particularly drawn to these dark aspects of landscape, you know, and, and this place is rife with it, as, as, as are they all. I go to Cornwall painting a bit, and that's the that's same. You know, uh, it's advertised as a ho holiday destination, but we actually go there and, and, and ignore the beaches, you know, and, and you start going into town and looking at the length of the unemployment kills, you know, and, and or, or the syringes and, and the empty whiskey bottles around the churchyards, you know, that's the sort of reality that, that I don't seek out, I don't have to seek it out, it, it's there in your face, but you, you don't have to, I don't know, how, what, how can you do it justice? That, that's what I mean. I'm exploring the limitations of painting all the time, you know, trying to get something more real, trying to ingest something more real into it. And, and bear, uh, I bear in mind, not me as, as a painter, but, but the guys who, who, who are the potential spectators. So, you know, their, their subjective experience. You know what I mean? Uh, so sometimes, yeah, if it's a great light effect, and I mean Smeet and Piers in St Ives, it, you know, in the harbour there, and it's great, and um, we're all in a good mood, and we've had a great holiday, you know, uh, I'll paint it like that. So that's just about a, a light effect, but it's so perfect as to what a real landscape is. You know, it, it just so happens that, that those sort of things that I do make from time to time uh, do seem to be better received. They are the best sellers and they are turned into prints and things like that. Because that's what you want on your wall.